Well, it's a pleasure and thank you once again for joining us. My name is Fred Makuya. We are still making sense on how best we can manage our society, particularly Kampala, capital city, uh, making it better in terms of waste management. I am joined once again in this second episode by Fortunate Olishaba, the coordinator for the Solid Waste Management Project. It's a project under the Uganda Small Scale Industries Association. Olivia, in, in our second break, I, I, I kept on hearing you talking about the women. Your reference was on the women. What is so unique with the, men, with the women, especially when it comes to such a project? Okay. Uh, as Uganda Small Scale Industries Association, we have a department for, for women desk. And uh, in women desk, we always look out for what, what can we do to bring up a woman who is out there looking for what to do to earn a living? And there are several women uh, uh, out there who just wake up in the morning. They, they are just there. They, they, don't even want to, they don't even have what to eat. So we are looking out for women that we can also help. Uh, we would like to help our members, like a woman who has decided to be so enterprising so what can we do, how can we do our best to help out a woman out there and raise their profile in industry? But there are also men of the same category. Yes. Um, Anti-gender yes. insensitive when it comes to this project. You would also consider the men. Uh, we also consider the, the, the men, but uh, we mo mainly focus. No, I mean, as Uganda Small Scale Industries Association, we focus on the men and the women. But there are some projects that we, we, we put out there and we target, say, 60% uh, women and 40% women. So maybe that will help us. Uh, let's broaden more on the, the challenges that come with every project. Um, I don't know what you have to say, putting in perspective that you're aware of the challenges that are most likely to come as a result of the initiation of this project. Yes. Now. Uh, as we started this project, we were aware of uh, a few challenges that we were going to meet. Now, some of the challenges that we, we anticipated uh, is the poor quality of the briquettes. On the market, we already have some of the briquettes that are of poor quality. When someone uses these briquettes, they sign never to again use charcoal briquettes again. But uh, we are going to address this right away from the very first step of processing these briquettes. So we would want uh, anyone who is into briquette making should be keen on the raw materials that they are using. You don't just put raw materials together and that is it and you think you've made a briquette. It takes more than that. It takes, you, you even have to measure some of these raw materials that you're using. The moment you put uh, 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 so much that is maybe not needed, you end up diverting from, the, from quality. Uh, now, we have uh, another big challenge that uh, comes along with uh, charcoal briquettes, uh, which is marketing of these products. You might train someone, you train this person, how, how can I make a briquette? And then after making these products, that is all. But that's not where we are going to stop. Uh, we have a marketing department that will take over that. And we shall make sure that uh, we provide market for these products. Yes, we even work with different uh, government agencies. For example, the Uganda register. Uh, you okay? We want these products to be regis registered. We have a, a, a company name or a business name, and of course that is, that all contributes to how you're going to get market for your products. And uh, we are in partnership with uh, with UNBS. Now, uh, UNBS uh, will also be engaged in um, making sure these briquettes are up to standard. So we are also going to help these women to get the standards mark, the, 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 the Q mark, so, so that these briquettes can also be put out there, even in supermarkets. You know, you're going to a supermarket to buy briquettes. So to address the issue of marketing and Yes, we are also coming up with an online shop and a quite range of services that we offer that all contribute to, to marketing of these products. Yes. So in this, in case I, I want to be a member, but I'm not within the proximity uh, of Kampala where this project is operating. So I would want to be part of this project, but I'm not in the proximity of these areas. What do I do? 
Uh, for people who are not uh, in this area of uh, Kawempe Division and they are still interested in uh, getting these trainings and making these products, they can still approach us at our offices. We have a number of services that we can offer. Yes, apart from the project, we also do what we call cottage trainings. So in these cottage trainings is where you learn how can I make this product. Like I mentioned earlier, you can learn to make any product with us. So even when you're not under the project, you can still learn how to make these briquettes and yes, you can still access all the services that we offer. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about the cottage. Give us an example. Uh, cottage trainings, uh, the trainings that we, there are some of the startup trainings that we offer as Uganda Small Scale Industries Association. Someone might come and say, I want to learn, I want to learn how to make bus soap. Yes. So we, we get, uh, of course, uh, there's a little fee that you can pay when you're not a member. So uh, we put together, we show you these are the raw materials that you need for making soap. This is how you do it. Yes, we put the machines and show you how you can do this particular product. Yes. And after making this product, of course, from startup, you go to skills upgrading. So we've started with you right from the start and we've taught you how you can make this product. So we also make sure we do skills upgrading for you and any other that you need to develop the product. Talk about follow-up. Many, many companies come up with a view of helping business people, but after that is done, you never see them again. In fact, that's why many of you, when you go to the field, people keep on referring you out because of our government. So talk about the follow-up. Is it just a project you are just initiating or you have the, the different arrangements of how you'll be able to do a follow-up and assess whether the project has been of benefit or the project has not benefited entirely the people or it hasn't actually worked totally? Hmm. Uh, for follow-up, um, like I mentioned earlier, as long as you enroll under the project activities, it is mandatory to become a member of Uganda Small Scale Industries Association. And once you become a member, you become just like any other enterprise that has joined by its own, that has joined to, to make sure that their products are out there on the market. So we are using that, uh, if once you become the, the member, then it becomes easier for us to follow up, to monitor. Yes, yeah, we, we can, I, I think I did mention, we are going to put, to put machines that people can use. We are going to rent where they can, we can put this machine. So it's not just a matter of, we would have said uh, a group of women, let's give you a machine and you start making briquettes on your own. But we have taken it upon our responsibility to monitor these machines, to monitor the process of, um, of making these products. So through all that, we are carrying out um, monitoring and we see how this is bring, bringing an impact to, yes, to, 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 to the association, bringing an impact to the economy. Okay. Time seems not to be our best friend. We should be winding up this interview, uh, Olishava. What are those last words you'd want to speak to us, a manufacturer who is in business, probably who has lost business, who has given up, and even those that would want to start again business? How are you helping them as Uzia, and what message do you have finally to the viewers? Uh, as, as we close, I would like to, to communicate to anyone out there. Like I mentioned, we have seen businesses start, we have seen businesses fail, we have seen businesses still move on. So it is always upon you to have passion for what you're doing. I, I, I have also done things in different uh, perspectives. And once you don't have passion for what you're doing, then in most cases, it's, it doesn't really work out. Yes, but even if, even if it fails, you can still, you can still work you can still get up and start your business. Because I, I, I think uh, the biggest percentage of, uh, of, uh, that contributes to the economy is from the small and medium enterprises. 
and it is from these small and medium enterprises that we can grow big every day, day by day. Olishaba, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being generous with your knowledge. Dear viewers, thank you for being part and parcel of this very educative discussion. I was told by my mother that it is only a fool who keeps on doing the same things over and over time, but he expects different results. Uganda Small Scale Industries Association is here to help us not to do the same things, but expect different results. But they're here to help us do things different and be in position to expect different results. I hope this discussion has not only benefited you, but it has also transformed your life. Stay tuned to Smart24 TV. My name is Fred Akuya.